What is going on guys, welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about the new features in Python version 3.9, or at least some of the new features. And I know this version is not, uh, was not released yesterday or two days ago, it's been some time already, uh, but it's still the most recent version and a lot of you guys are not familiar with it and you don't know about the new features. And for those of you who are interested in the new features of Python 3.9, I'm making this video here. So let us get right into it. All right, guys, so in order to show you what's new in Python 3.9, I'm opening up two idols here, so two development environments. First of all, Python 3.8, and then also Python 3.9, and we're going to see what we can do in the left one, uh, or actually in the right one, which we cannot do in the left one. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are dictionary merging operators. And I've already made a video on that, on dictionary merging in my Python tips and tricks series. Um, but in this video, we're going to talk specifically about what is new. and if you have a dictionary, let's say we have dict1 equals uh, something, I don't know, we have a and a points to 10, or a has the value 10, and we have b and b has the value 50 or something. This is the first dictionary. Then we have a second dictionary where we have something like um, b as well, but this time with a different value. Come on a different value 20, for example, and then we also have C and C has another value of 30 or something. So those are two dictionaries. And what we did in uh, 3.8 is uh, if we wanted to merge it, uh, there are different possibilities, there are different, uh, different ways to do it. But one way was to just create a new dictionary by saying dict three, for example, equals, um, and then those two uh, star operators here, the keyword arguments operators here, uh, to unpack the dictionary. So we say dict one, and then unpack dict two again. Uh, now again, also. Uh, and if we do that, we end up with dictionary three, which is a merged dictionary where the second one overwrites everything that has to be overwritten in the first one. Um, and this is fine. But one thing that we cannot do here is do the same thing with just an operator, we cannot just say something like dict three equals dict one, uh, some operator here, and dig two. And this is something that we can do in Python 3.9. I'm going to copy those two lines here. Um, first one, second one, what we can do here is we can say dict three equals, and now we can say dict one. And now we can introduce a dictionary merging operator. This is this one here, just a, a basic straight line, the or operator, if you know it, um, and then dict two. And this is the dictionary merging operator, as you can see here, I go ahead and print dict three, you can see that it's the same result. But however, here, I cannot do this, I cannot say dict one, dict two, this doesn't work, we get an error because that is not uh, supported here. Also, what we can do is we can update a dictionary with an operator. And in Python 3.8, what we did for that is we just said, dict one, uh, updating, by the way, means taking the dictionary that already exists and just updating the values. So you're still merging, but you're not creating a third dictionary, you're just using one of the dictionaries that you already have and overwrite the values in it. So in this case, dict one update dict two, this would work as well. As you can see, and here we can do the same thing. Uh, but with the merging operator combined with an assignment operator. So in this case, we can just say dict one merge equals dict two. And we're getting the same result here. Now, then we also have two new string functions, which are used for removing the prefix and the suffix. So let's say in Python 3.8, uh, we have a string here, or actually, let's first do it in 3.9. And then just show that it doesn't work in 3.8. Uh, let's say we have a string here, like, uh, I don't know, hello, world. And now we can go ahead and say, remove prefix. And the prefix is, for example, hello. And as you can see, it removes the prefix, uh, which is not something that we can do with other string functions, because it's not replacing all occurrences of hello world. Uh, for example, if I have hello world, hello. And I say remove prefix, hello. It's not going to remove this hello here, it's only going to remove the prefix. So it's always removing the uh, the first uh, characters if they are the prefix, right? So if we have a bunch of strings that all start with, uh, I don't know, message colon, and we want to remove it, we just say remove prefix message colon. 
And this is something that we can do in 3.9. We cannot do this in 3.8. So if I go ahead and say hello world here dot remove prefix. Hello. It says no attribute remove prefix. We don't have that. Uh, and we have the same thing for the suffix. So we can go ahead with the same string. Hello world. Hello dot remove suffix. Hello, and it's going to do the opposite. It's going to remove it in the end. So if we have something like, I don't know, uh, for example, a bunch of strings here, and they all end with backslash n or backslash t or, I don't know, uh, something that we don't want to have here, we can just go ahead and remove it with, with the remove suffix method. And this is also something that does not exist. It does not exist in Python 3.8. Remove suffix. As you can see, no attribute remove suffix. All right, so next we get to something that I've personally never used, but it was already available in Python 3.8 to some degree, and it's called type hinting. And type hinting means that you're hinting uh, what type your variables, return values, parameters, and so on are. And yes, Python is dynamically typed, so you're not necessarily limited to those types. You can also add different types to the variables and lists and so on. Um, but it's useful because there are certain plugins or tools that uh, check if all these hints are satisfied, so to say. So if you're, for example, if you say I have an integer here and you assign a string, Python is going to allow you to do that. But certain plugins maybe will say, hey, uh, you're violating the type hints. And it may be useful as a tool. I've personally never used it. So, uh, but however, there's something new about that in Python 3.9, because what you could do in Python 3.8 is you could say something like, uh, I think how it's written uh, is my variable colon then int equals 10. Yes, this is how you do the type hinting. Then you can also say something like give me a function, my function has a parameter, my param, which is an integer. And then we also have a return value that is an integer. And the function returns 10, for example, this is something that we can already do in Python 3.8. But what we cannot do in Python 3.8 is do the same thing for collections. So we cannot say my list, at least not that easily, we cannot say my list, list integer equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example, this does not work. However, this does work in Python 3.9. So we can go ahead and say my list, list of integers equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As you can see, this works. And we're not going to see any effects here, because I can still go ahead and say my list um, I don't know my list three equals hello. So it's not going to, uh, to forbid me that I can do this. But if I'm using something that checks for the type hinting, and if uh, everything is satisfied, and you know, consistent, uh, I'm going to see that it's not because I'm adding a string to something that should be a list of integers. Then we also have something in the math module that is quite interesting. If you go ahead and import math in Python 3.8, you can go ahead and calculate the greatest common divisor. So you can just go ahead and say math dot uh, GCD greatest common divisor of two numbers. So for example, 10 and or actually let's take something like 15 and 25. And you can see it's five because both are divisible by five. And there's no uh, number higher than five greater than five that divides both numbers. So this is the greatest common divisor. However, if I want to do this for multiple values, I'm not able to do this. So I cannot go ahead and say, okay, I want to know for 15, for 25, and for 125. Doesn't work. Expected two arguments got three. However, this is something that does work in Python 3.9, because we can uh, add as many values as we want to that function. So we can go ahead and say import math, math dot gcd. Uh, 15, 25, 125. As you can see, we can also go ahead and break this thing by saying 17, which is a prime, so we would get one. Um, and we can add as many values as we want to that. And not only to that function, we can also use the LCM function, I think it's called, or actually, I'm not sure if it even exists, because that's the least common multiple. I'm not sure if it even exists in Python 3.8. No, it doesn't even have that function. Uh, in Python 3.9, we have a new function, uh, as it seems, which is math dot least common multiplier or multiple LCM. And we can do the same thing for the least common multiple of, for example, five, three, and uh, I don't know, two. And we can see it's 30 uh, in this case, uh, or we can go ahead and say math LCM of 
seven, two, four, or actually let's go with, uh, yeah, let's go with four, I don't care. Um, and as you can see in this case, it's 28. So this is a new function and this one now accepts uh, a variable amount of parameters. All right, so that's it for today's video. I know that I didn't include all of the new features of Python 3.9, but the purpose of this video is not to list all of them. We have the documentation for that. Uh, if I don't forget it, I'm linking it down below in the description. Uh, two things that should be mentioned, maybe if you wanna look into them, is that decorators are now more flexible. So if you're someone who uses decorators, you might wanna check out the Python documentation about decor uh, decorators. And if you're someone who works a lot with date times, you can also check out the native time zone functionality in the documentation. Other than that, there are a lot of uh, minor changes as well. So if you're into Python, and if you want to know all the details, go into the documentation and check it out. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.